So this is the ultimate board game Christmas gift guide 2024 for $20 and under. That's US dollars. Oh, thanks for coming. Happy Christmas. Oh, what is this? A board game. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You can make it. Thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Oh, a present. You don't have to. Ah, <laughs> seriously, you don't have to. But thank you. Hey, how are you going? Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. Ooh, what is this? A board game. Thank you so much. Really, seriously, no need to bring me games next time. <laughs> thank you. again a present oh thank you so much ah. Ah! well we ideally don't want to be like that right Terrence? ideally not no <laughs> don't want to end up with multiple copies of the same thing so hopefully that's why we are here and hi by the way i'm stella and I'm Tarrant from Meeple University. We're going to suggest you 10 games, some great games, recently each released and still available to get. There should be something for everyone here, hopefully, from party games to two player games or solo game for those who like to play solo. And of course, Christmas is coming. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll have enough time to rush to the shops or order online or however you order the game but here are the 10 games. So in no particular order, game number one is Kingdom Legacy for those solo game lovers. Yes, it's a solo card game, so it just comes with a block of cards. Uh, it's a new release from Essen from Frix Games, and it is a solo game that takes about probably six to eight hours to play, and you are playing your cards and you're making choices to upgrade certain cards, which you do by either flipping them or rotating them. And it will take you on a journey as you make choices that give you different options. It's a one and done game because you put stickers on the cards or rip cards up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, really you just tell that, tell your own story. So it's, um, it's kind of a new sort of yeah. thing. Most of that solo type of game is the little dungeon crawler type of thing. This one is not. This is a, essentially a deck hand build management type of game. And cost is around $13. Second game is The Fuzzies. So this is a really fun party game. It's a little bit of dexterity. Yep, this one probably works for it uh, works as a family gift, gift for mm. children, or a gift for young adults, because it's essentially a, it's an upgrade on Jenga. It's a different sort of Jenga. You build, a, you put together a tower, but instead of it being made up of the little uh, bits of wood that Jenga is, it's made up of very light cotton yes. wool ball-y <laughs> types of things that hold together through... Uh, electro, um, what's it called? Static electricity, <laughs> charge, and all that sort of thing. And then from there, it's fundamentally the same. You have to move pieces out and to mm -hmm. the top. So works quite well in in all of those contexts. Game number three is the gang sitting at fifteen dollars, and this is a cooperative game and using. Playing card. It looks like playing card, but it's not. Yeah, it is. If you think of what the crew brought to trick taking a few years ago, uh, the gang is a very similar concept based on Texas Hold'em poker. Uh, everyone will have, you essentially play a round of Texas Hold'em, and everyone tries to uh, piece together through each revelation of cards whether they think they've got the best hand or the worst hand. So instead of betting to try to get money, you're trying to assess your strength against the other player's strengths. So very much in that same sort of inspiration that the crew was. And of course, they have very similar names. They're both, you know, the gang, the crew, they're both groups of people. 
I think it's a very popular release this year. If you know somebody that likes to play Texas Hold'em or any cards play, maybe give this one. And this is cooperative, so very different and it does not include gambling. <laughs> yeah, and I think with the crew there was always a... There could be a difficult entry point because it did have a very specific um, old style trick-taking vibe to it, which not everyone has played these days. So this one, poker probably a little bit more familiar to many players, and so a good entry point into uh, that sort of cooperative game. Number four is a game called Ito, another cooperative game, and this one is by Arkane Wonders, but it was published already about five years ago, so they're re-releasing it again. This is a game about cooperatively trying to guess where you need to put your hidden numbers that was given to you at the start of the round. Yeah, it's a party game. It's been kind of described as a timeline mixed with wavelength. So you will have a category, you'll have a number, and you're trying to give an example in that category, which is somewhere between 1 and 100 on the scale for the number you've been given. So using the prompt, then you, let's say, uh, the weirdest thing to say, so from 0 to 100. And if you have, let's say, number 100... You would make a range of silly noises. <laughs> So something that is like the weirdest one that you can think of, that you think other people will think that's weird. That's really important because then when you put it there, put it down, then your people can then try to guess what number it is. And then based on that, then they're making, I don't know, like, let's say somebody else get have number one. So they would put like, hello, my name is Joe, for example, and that person's name is Joe, so that's very, very normal. So you would say, okay, that's probably number one to five or something like that. And then the next person will be putting it based on what is already on the table. It's a really fun party game, I think. Yeah, it has pretty broad applicability. Uh, you could give this to families with medium children up to adults. I think it plays across that whole range. I mean, hey, you can use your own prompt as well. Number five, hey, another cooperative game is Exit the Game for $15. Now, this is not just one. There are so many different Exit games, and that's the beauty of it. So this is like Escape Room in the Box, and they have so many different themes. So you can just get the new release one and gift it. And this is a one-and-done game as well, and it's you have to solve puzzle together. I think this is quite safe if you get somebody the new world release one and they like escape room type of thing, you know, there's a chance that they don't have it yet. Yep, this is the sort of, you know, the classic uh, target audience for this as a Christmas gift, I think, is uncles and grandparents who know that they can just get the new one every year and <laughs> then they don't have to think about it. <laughs> or you can give it to uh, friends you know like ex escape rooms. Surely you think of this before. Grandpa Tarrant? <laughs> Not Grandpa Tarrant. But you have an old soul. That's a good I thing. I have an old soul. But no, it is, of course, because they, <laughs> there are new ones almost in the store every time I go to see it. So it's, it's true. A pretty, as long as you stay current with them, it is a pretty reliable mm -hmm. Christmas gift. There's also an Advent ca calendar of Exit. They have that's been doing option, that, yeah. yes. Yeah, so that's another option. Don't give it to them at Christmas, though, because then it's... Already. Do it before Christmas. Yes. <laughs> 25 days before Christmas. That makes sense. Here's your early... It's a Thanksgiving present. Yes. If you celebrate Thanksgiving. If not, you can just On give On the some. American date. <laughs> Number six is King of Tokyo Duel. So this is the new version and this was released this year at $19. And this is the two-player version of King of Tokyo, a well-known release years and years ago game. It's dice rolling game. So it's like Yahtzee. Yes. You roll dice up to three times. And in the base game, King of Tokyo, you need to try to survive and attack other people or collect the stars to win. But in this dual version, just for two players, and it's like tug of war. You need to try to move these two important pieces to your side or kill the opponent. King of Tokyo and all of the games that have followed up from it were never great at two players. 
And so while I always found a good space in the Gateway Gamers collection or the Family collection, uh, if it is a really popular game, but you're dealing with someone who often only has two people to play with, then this is a good addition. It's certainly a much better game at two players sure. than the original game. How we'll do this. How Not long like can this we thing. string this along? <laughs> that was intentional. That was really funny, Taryn. Mm. Kites. This is yet another cooperative game. But this is real time, real time. So a little bit of time pressure, no problem because it's cooperative, really simple, really nice. Fundamentally, you're playing cards to keep the hourglasses alive and the game is played in real time. And so you need to find and make sure you play a card for a given colored hourglass to flip it back over before it runs out. As simple as that. So if we have other videos for the game that we talked about, it will be somewhere in the video description below. So check that out. I do find that this one, this is a, a good one for children families because it is a, it plays kind of like a toy as well as a game. So it works very well in that context. And I think it can work as a gift for any sorts of gamers as well. Cause it's a very mm -hmm. easy one to bring out as an icebreaker at events. So does it work as a kite? No, it won't. No. Not that not way. Not even a box kite. No, no, it's not. <laughs> this video has become a charade. So <laughs> I don't know what that game means. Ah, oh, so sad. So this is Rebel Princess. So that's the princess. Ah, right. I haven't sent the rebel yet. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Rebel Princess at number eight for twenty dollars. This is a fun trick-taking game. Yes, and this one is, this one works very well as a gift because it is a very familiar trick-taking game. Anyone who's played Hearts on the old Microsoft computers uh, will be instantly familiar with it because the game is very heavily based on that. And it's based on a different princess characters that are familiar to most people, like Cinderella. Oh no, I only know one princess. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, Mul Snow Mulan. White, others Thank like that. Um, with <laughs> I not swear a, I know more. And not in the um, familiar Disney art style, but it's got mm -hmm. uh, quite a quite a fun art style of its own. Yeah, so well, thematically, as the title suggests, that you are a princess, but you're rebellious and you don't want to marry this Prince Charming. So in this trick-taking adaptation is that you don't want to win the trick with the prince on it. So it's just like, oh, I don't want it, I don't want it. So, so how you modify that, it's just a really fun game. And each game is different as well. It has got some modification, game modification that makes no two games the same. So Rebel Princess, even though you're not really familiar with trick-taking games. Ahoy, Captain. Hello, Kitten. So that is the next game, Ahoy, Kitten. This is a simultaneous action selection game uh, player. There will be fish out on the table and everyone points simultaneously at the fish they want to take. And if they're the only ones to point at a certain set of fish, they get to take it. Uh, but you can point at all the fish someone else has collected as one of the things you point for, or you can protect your own fish and bank them for the end of the game. So that's fundamentally the game. It is very quick, very simple. Uh, quite inexpensive. It's nine dollars. Uh, and it works, I would say it works more as a gift for young to medium children. I think anyone can play the game. Oh, we yes. have a lot of fun playing the game. Mm -hmm. I would probably uh, use it as a stocking stuffer from a gift perspective. <laughs> Definitely. This is a fun little game you can teach as you play and the way you earn points is you collect set of fish, different color fish. That's it. Yes, medium risk of fights if you have, uh, if you do have a uh, children group that is, you need to put it really that likes carefully. to win, uh, there's a medium risk of fight. Would you fight with your brother? Probably. <laughs> I would probably definitely fight with my sister, so yes. yeah, so yeah, ahoy kitten, fight at your own risk. Last but not least, game. 
for $16. It is Mindbug. So this is a two-player game and it is, we'll call it a battle card game. So it's got that TCG battle card game vibe, but it's vibe. not a TCG, no. it's uh, self-contained. And it has this really interesting mechanism where you get your random set of cards, uh, but the other player can take two of them from you as you play them during the game. That's really the hook of the game. That's how it kind of balances things out as well, mm. because you, you're you watching to see, am I going to take that card so I can use it now? And then you just try to, to win the battle. It's a it's an advanced, it's, it's a medium to advanced kind of game. So you're going to be giving this to gamers or butting gamers. And it is designed or was designed by Richard Garfield of Magic the Gathering. So if you want that Magic the Gathering feel, but you don't want to spend the money, is Mindbug. The same designer, kind of like similar-ish feeling without the pressure to buy more and more cards. So it's not the game that you were worried that let's say you give it to your kid like no they're not gonna spend more and more money to buy more and more of these well there are expansions but it's not like magic the gathering that's a big difference right and so that's it that's 10 recommendations from us any other recommendations please let us know in the comments if you think this video is useful to you somehow please let us know in the comment it'd be really, really nice and kind of you to do so and hopefully you have a great great holiday coming up soon see you later